We move to the bottom half of the third inning here in Toronto. Ernie Johnson, Ron Darling, Cal Ripken with you. And we have a special guest here in the bottom half of the third, Josh Tomlin of the Cleveland Indians. 2-0 in this postseason. Josh, thanks a lot for taking a couple of minutes with us. No problem, fellas. Thanks for having me. Hey, look, you've done something in this series that you didn't expect to do. You were supposed to pitch game three here. You were moved up to pitch game two as we watch Trevor Bauer doing something he's never done, pitching on short rest. What's the challenge? What was the challenge for you to prepare for game two rather than game three? Uh, there really wasn't a challenge. Uh, we tried to get prepared throughout the course of the week, regardless of, uh, of when we were going to pitch. But um, finding out that uh, TV had cut his hand, it was just Mickey. I found out. I woke up that uh, I think it was Thursday morning and found out that um, TB had cut his hand and Mickey had said I was going to pitch tomorrow. So I got to the ballpark, talked to him about it, and um, I was excited about going. It's just one of those things you prepare yourself for the week in case something like that happens. Hey, Josh, part of the perils of being a starting pitcher is occasionally you lose your way. And you had a tough August, but boy, your September and October have been unbelievable. What did you work on and what did you change? I think for me, it's all about uh, executing the pitches and the pitch selection I was going with uh, for the most part. It was, I was getting kind of dominant to one side of the plate, um, opposite arm side, trying to cut and throw four seamers to outside the righties. I think my split was uh, pretty obvious on that whenever you look at the right handed hitters compared to left handed hitters, I was able to get the ball in on lefties a lot better. And then uh, they were just kind of eliminating one side of the plate. If I went in, it was for show. And then it was, um, I never really pitched in there, wore through in there. It was just kind of for show. Then went back away. So it was just kind of, you know, sitting out on the plate against me and, and, and um, able to do some damage. So for me, it was just uh, getting back to executing pitches, getting getting back to doing what I'm capable of doing, and uh, mix and match and try to keep them off balance. One down is Ryan Golan strikes out. Cal, you got something for Josh? Yeah, I was uh, admiring your curveball the other day. And uh, they're having trouble. And I was wondering if you pitched against the Blue Jays enough to know which ones will pull it over in this camera well where I'm sitting right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you hang it to any of them, they can do, they can do that. That, uh, that team, if you make a mistake to them, they can do some damage on you in a hurry. So what do you do when, you, when you're trying to find your curveball? Uh, for me, it's, it's just trying to rip it down in the zone as, as, as much as I can, as, as hard as I can. Um, if you try to start filling out the zone with it, it kind of you kind of get lazy with you don't have the same arm action as a fastball and it kind of tends to hang or back up on you a little bit so um, and I think the more you throw it throughout the course of the game you kind of find that slot you find that release point you find that grip that you like and you can kind of settle in with it a little bit and um, but for me it was just trying to I, I knew I had to establish a curveball throw first strike throw for ball so it was try to keep the arm speed and the uh, the slot how I wanted it and just try to get make it look as much like my four shamers I could and try to get the bottom of the zone so they couldn't do any damage. Josh last night when Bauer leaves the game and then you know Terry Francona's kind of saying okay how am I going to piece this together take me through the conversation you had with Tito and what he had to say to you. I just told him I said um, you know hey T, I know uh, uh, Kluber's going to go on short rest tomorrow. I said, I'm willing to go down the bullpen and, and, and help us out, especially if you have to use a lot of those guys tonight and they get pretty taxed. I said, I'm willing to go down there and, um, you know, have his back because I know he's on three days rest. And um, he said, we'll see how this game goes. And um, if we need you down there, today was my side day. So if we need you down there, maybe throw an in-game bullpen or just wait till after the game to throw it. And, um, but he decided against that. So um, now I go try to go prepare for for game six. So Josh, I'm going to try to get you away from the seat throwers. <laughs> One last question. We're watching you. We know you have something special going on in that clubhouse. Can you express it to us what you got going? It's hard to explain, man. You got, to me, you have 25 athletes that just love playing the game, and uh, they love being around each other and love competing with each other. And, um, when you get a group of guys like that, that kind of, that, that fit well in the clubhouse together and love being around each other, it makes for a pretty good team, and um, I think that's what we have. We have a true, uh, team everybody's willing to do whatever it takes to try to win today and we'll worry about tomorrow tomorrow and I know that Ron said that was the last question but this is actually <laughs> the last question because I know you grew up playing catch with your dad Jerry that's how you developed your pinpoint control and I know he's been a little under the weather here recently any message to him uh, yeah uh, I love you dad and keep fighting and I uh, uh, appreciate everything you've ever done for me it's been a, it's been a lot to me and thank you for allowing me to chase my dream Hey, thanks a lot, Josh, for spending some time with us. And, uh, and good luck to you and to your dad as well. I appreciate that. Thanks, fellas. You got it.